This is an in-depth tutorial on how to make an automated solar array without sensors. This video assumes you know how to use the electronics printer, do basic wiring, and understand the transformers. There's a few materials you'll need to begin. I'll list them on the screen here, but they are as follows. The power controller, the computer, the logic motherboard, heavy cables, the battery, a solar panel, and a transformer. The amount of heavy cables and normal cables will vary with the size of your solar array and your base. Begin by placing your solar panel in an appropriate area as well as an efficient one. In this example here, I only used a single solar panel. It'll work the same for multiple, you just have to do a little bit more in your logic computer. Once you're done with your solar panel, place down the battery that you've constructed. Make sure you place your battery in an appropriate place as well as one where it's easy to access the input and output. From here, you're going to connect your battery with heavy cables from the solar panel. You'll use heavy cables because once you have enough solar panels in your array, it'll be too much for the regular cables to handle. This is basically just future-proofing it. Begin laying cable towards whichever machines you want to start powering. Once you get to the place before your machines, you're going to want to place a transformer that'll then lead into a power controller. You're going to use normal cables after the transformer because the transformer allows you to limit the amount of power through, so this makes it so the cables can actually handle it. Wire it directly into an APC like you normally would from any power source, and then start wiring up your machines. My batteries are always low, so I was actually hooking this into a battery charger as my machine. You can use any machine though, like the auto lathe or the electronics printer. From here, I also plug it into a computer as I need to be able to control the logic from somewhere. When wiring your computer, ensure that the power is coming from the end of the transformer, while the data is actually coming from the solar array with the heavy cables. I'll go more into detail on this later, but this is mainly because you're looking for the data from the solar panels. Once your computer is powered, put in the logic motherboard and turn it on. From here, you're going to start programming the logic for your solar panel array to automatically go with the sun. We're doing this without any daylight sensors. We're using the solar panel as a sensor itself because the logic will be based on how much power the solar panel is actually generating. As a side note, you may need to set up a solid generator when you're first setting up the logic controller as you may not be getting any power from the solar panel efficiently. The basic concept of using the solar panel itself as a sensor is on the condition you're gonna set it so in the first state that when the solar panel has a charge of less than a really small number. In this case, I end up using five. From here, you're gonna set the action to change the vertical of the solar panel. The goal here of this first state is actually to make it so the solar panel rotates back to the morning position. So for the action, set the solar panel vertical and then choose the angle that's appropriate. You may have to check your solar panel to see which side is the morning side. In this case, for me, it's 100. With that complete, you're going to end up creating a new state. When you've created a new state, make sure to go back up to the old one and change the next state to the one you just created as you want to make sure the flow is steady. The first state that I created is really just the reset state for the night, so the second state is technically the first one that you really want to look into. For the condition, you're going to set the solar panel charge to be greater than 495. You can set this number to be anywhere in the 490s. I've personally found 495 to be rather efficient. Once you've set that condition, the next thing you're going to set is the action. Now, if you have multiple solar panels, you only need the one condition, but you'll need to set the action for each individual panel. Now, for the action, you're going to set the solar panel, then the angle, and then 5 degrees more or less of what you have. For example, if you're at 100, you're going to set it to 95. If you're at 0, you're going to set it to 5. If you want to do less states, set the degree from 5 to 10. So for example, it'll be 100 to 90 or 0 to 10, and then so on and so forth. The goal with this logic is just to keep repeating until you hit the opposite angle. You keep setting the condition that when the charge is above 495, that the angle changes 5 or 10 degrees. You do this till the solar panel can go no further, and then you set the next state to be the first one, as that's the reset state. Depending on how efficient you want the solar panels to be, it'll change the number of states you need. The more efficient you want it to be, the more states you need. In this example, I end up with 21 states because of how many angles I have to change. To ensure the cycle works properly, you're going to want to hit play on the very first state. This makes it so that the solar panel goes back to the morning position. I would do this during the night so that way it doesn't randomly catch the 495 watts. 
Logic has a lot of functions in this game, and one of the ones that I added here was the solid generator would turn off during the day, and then it would turn on during night, but it would turn off again if the battery was full. Thank you for watching this in-depth tutorial on how to set up an automated solar array. Like I said, you can do this with multiple solar panels, you just have to do a little bit more in the logic where you just change the angle on every single solar panel. Although you only need to set the condition on one of them so long as they're all in the same sunlight. Feel free to give me suggestions on what I should cover next, and if there was anything I missed or there was misinformation in the video. I'd like to improve, and feedback is always welcome. Thank you for watching.